The NRO um, has an executive council, which is made up of the executives from each of the RIR. So I'm the representative from Aaron. Um, and then uh, usually the uh, chair of the NRO would give the update, um, but the chair is uh, Oscar. Oscar's in preparation for his upcoming LAC meeting, and so uh, the task falls to me. So I will give the NRO update. What is the NRO? Flagship and global leader for collaborative internet number resource management as a central element of an open, stable, and secure internet. We basically coordinate collectively the activities of the RIR to give a nice, stable number system. That generally works. Um, so we have, I'm going to go through that. Our key focus areas, talk about our financials, talk about the activities, specific activities we've been doing, uh, and uh, then take any questions. Um, we were incorporated, uh, not incorporated, we're unincorporated, but we were formed by an MOU in 2003. And um, it's uh, just an agreement that says how the RIRs work together. And again, it's uh, to provide a coordinated number system. When someone has a question about the internet number registry, they can go to their local RIR. But a lot of times, we'll get a question, you get a question from an international organization, they want to hear a voice that represents the full number registry system. And so uh, it's a focal point for queries about the, about the internet number registry. Um, and uh, we contribute to uh, global discussions when someone's looking for an opinion on how something affects the number registry. We often will prepare a piece and file it. Um, so the executive committee, as I said, is made up of the five CEOs or executive directors. Oscar Robales is LACNIC uh, and chair this year. I'm the secretary, Paul Wilson, treasurer. Alan Barrett is, uh, uh, and Axel, Pox, Axel Pollock are also on the executive committee. The roles rotate every year. Um, so you get to, uh, each RIR takes a different task. Uh, the secretariat uh, function is hosted by LACNIC. We have an executive secretary, Herman, who handles uh, all of the things of keeping us running smoothly. We have coordination groups, which people don't really know. We don't talk much externally about them. But um, the respective communication teams, the uh, public affairs teams, the uh, engineering teams, and the resource managers, the leaders of those teams from each of the RIRs get together to talk about joint activities. So, for example, the engineering teams, as you might imagine, spends time talking about things like RPKI, and the registration services managers spend time talking about things like joint stats and transfers. And when they're done talking about transfers, the engineering team gets to talk about transfers some more. And so it's uh, how we coordinate activities, because it is one registry, even though there's five RIRs. Um, so the uh, the uh, NRO finances, uh, we do have some expenses that we identify as NRO expenses. Travel for the chair of our advisory council, which we'll talk about, um, and the chair, uh, the executive secretary is an NRO expense. Uh, communication specific to the NRO, our website. IGF, the NRO contributes jointly on behalf of the five RIRs for IGF, the Internet Governance Forum. We contribute to ICANN. We've contributed $823,000 per year, every year since ICANN's inception. Um, and so um, that contribution is a joint contribution on behalf of the RIRs that goes, uh, comes from the NRO. Um, these expenses are budgeted and then proportioned out uh, based on the size of the RIRs, measured in registration services revenue. So each RIR pays a prorated portion of that. Um, the RIRs also um, have a uh, pledged funds to be available for registry stability. Uh, we've jointly, each RIR has made a pledge of a certain amount. Jointly, we have over $2.1 million. We all hold those funds. They're in our reserves. But they're pledged in case one of the RIRs were to come into some catastrophic circumstance that would represent a disruption and very quickly need support. We've pledged financial support. We've also pledged, uh, obviously, uh, staff and engineering support as necessary. Uh, so again, even though we're, the, the advantage of five organizations is that we're resilient. We will make sure that the system keeps running even if one of us were to run into a problem. Um, so, a couple of things we do. We produce the global uh, number, internet number status report, which Leslie gave yesterday. Uh, that's how we uh, co-join all the statistics and make sure we have information on the entire number registry. We do a comparative policy overview. This is an interesting one. 
If you're interested in, and Einar touched on this because uh, this is one of the more interesting things that has developed. If you're interested in what the policies are for what we're talking about in Aaron in the other regions, you can look up by area, V4, V6, assignments, allocations, transfers, and see how the other four RIRs should do their policy. And sometimes useful. Um, we, we all have our own communities. We all develop our own policies. There's no requirement for regional policies to line up. But we should not hesitate to borrow good ideas if someone else has got there first. And so uh, we do a comparative policy interview, uh, uh, comparative policy matrix so that people can look at the differences. Um, we have a governance matrix. We've actually compared the governance frameworks of the RIRs. Um, information on the bylaws, uh, use of who is, disputes, uh, budget practices, etc. And put that up for people who want to see how the RIRs are administered. And again, same thing. So you can see best practices uh, so we can inform each other. Um, we're working right now on an RIR accountability process. We've actually had uh, each RIR has hired an independent law firm to go out and look at its governing documents, its structure, try to figure out um, how to ensure that we're accountable to the members. We're not subject to um, being uh, captured by a, by a party, a disproportionate interest. And so uh, that we're doing, that's an ongoing activity right now. We hope to do a public report of those results uh, sometime later this year. Um, so I asked stewardship transition, the CRISPR team. So I'm going to talk about this in the panel later, but I'll do briefly. Um, in, um, <clears throat> wow, time flies. In 2014, the U.S. government indicated its willingness to transition the stewardship for the IANA registries, okay? The uh, DNS root zone, the protocol parameter registries, and the number registries um, to the global internet community. As part of this, obviously, worried about, we have to concern ourselves about how the responsibility for the global number registries are administered. And, and people, a lot of people sort of misunderstood the stewardship transition. Um, I saw probably 200 headlines that say, US government's planning on giving it all to ICANN. No, that's actually not what they said. They said they're giving it to the global community and they want ICANN to facilitate the process. So we, since uh, 2014, we've been going through a process. In the numbers community, we actually formed something called the CRISP team, the Consolidated RIR, IANA Stewardship Proposal Team, to come up with our proposal on how numbers, the stewardship for the numbers, should be handled. And the act of stewardship, in this case, predominantly means making sure someone's doing the IANA registry function. So right now, the US government asserts it's the steward. It has an NTIA contract with ICANN, and it's saying someone else needs to be the steward, so someone else needs to have a contract for IANA functions. So the CRISP team put together a proposal, and that proposal indicated that the five RIRs jointly would contract for an IANA operator, and we'll talk about this in some detail. Um, the proposal also talked about many other aspects, intellectual property and how reviews were handled. We submitted the CRISP team proposal by the deadline, January 15th, 2015. The uh, IETF did the same thing, uh, submitted its uh, proposal, uh, and then the names community was a little late. And the names community is um, late because it is, uh, it is a names community that's helped coordinate, be coordinated via ICANN, but ICANN is also the body that's doing the IANA function, and ICANN is also at times uh, an oversight body for various functions for global registries. And so when you have ICANN doing all those things, coming up with a plan is hard. In any case, we did our plan, the IETF did their plan, uh, the names community got their plan done, and their plan required some ICANN improvements um, in the bylaws. All of that gave us an extended game. Uh, and actually, all of that's finishing up. We'll talk about that in the panel this afternoon. But um, the CRISP team did its job and was finished predominantly in January 2015. It's hung around in case there's been any questions. Um, but uh, this was a successful joint planning activity of the RIRs that the NRO helped coordinate. Um, it's going to result in service level agreement, and that's online. I'm going to talk about that for an hour later on today, so we're going to skip that. The group in the, in the, um, in the names community 
realized they needed to change parts of ICANN's structure. And they came up with a cross-community working group on ICANN accountability. And we actually, because of the way ICANN structured, that cross-community group included people not just from the names community, but from, for example, the numbers community and the, and the IETF. And so we appointed, uh, the, R the RIR's jointly appointed RIR staff and ASO members uh, to this role. And uh, they've been helping with the accountability structure of ICANN because we don't want ICANN to become, in the process of trying to become unaccountable, become accountable, to actually become unaccountable by accident or to end up with a, a loophole and it's changed bylaws. This process, we'll also talk about this afternoon, but suffice to say when someone says they need representation from the numbers community, they come to the NRO and we figure out how that will be staffed. Um, we participated in the 10th IGF in Brazil. We support the IGF, the Internet Governance Forum. Uh, we have uh, an informational booth. The IGF has a lot of people who need awareness about how the number registry works as a major function of the NRO to make sure we have information there. Um, that's the whirlwind tour of the number resource organization. I guess I'll take questions now. We are going to have an NRO number council report that follows talking about things like uh, global policy and ICANN board appointments. But on the NRO, if there's any questions. Questions, questions? Okay, thank you. I will now.